Hi there, my name is Lo. Welcome to my channel where I discuss everything between Hermes and grocery bags. Welcome to another edition of Tea and Thoughts. Today I wanted to go through all of the luxury drama and luxury news that's been going on in the month of May and give you a little bit of my take on it. With me today I have my Mulberry Alexa Mini for eye candy. This also happens to be my bag of the day and I know a lot of people are not a big fan of this bag just because how fussy it is but frankly for me this is really proving to become an all-time favorite. So without further ado let's get this party started. I have my phone here so I can look at the notes that I made because frankly quite a lot went down in the month of May as pretty much happens every month. I feel there's always plenty going on in the designer and luxury realm. So we started off the month of May with a couple of events. May was the month of the Met Gala and of the Cannes Festival. There were a lot of beautiful outfits, a lot of spectacular outfits to be seen, a lot of gorgeous bags that went along with that. After party outfits, you name it. The theme of the Met Gala this year was Karl Lagerfeld, a line of beauty to honor the artistic brilliance of the late designer. However, as brilliant as Karl Lagerfeld was as a designer during his lifetime, he also made quite a number of remarks that were fatphobic, homophobic. So it was a little bit controversial in that sense that the Met Gala this year revolved around Karl Lagerfeld. Then there was the Cannes Movie Festival. Again, spectacular outfits to be seen over there. I think one of the people who really sort of stole the show was and I'm probably going to butcher this, but Ilona Cherbanai, who is, from my understanding, a fitness influencer. She walked on the red carpet in a Ukrainian colored dress, so the typical blue and yellow from the Ukrainian flag, and she poured fake blood over herself in protest of the war in Ukraine. Right after that, she was escorted off the red carpet by security. So I don't really know how to feel about this. On the one hand, I understand that they don't want people to make a political statement on the red carpet, the whole situation with the Ukraine is very sensitive, of course, especially in Europe. And I guess she could have made a political statement to some extent by just wearing that dress. Perhaps she took it a bit far, but then on the other hand, seeing her being carried away by security, that also seemed like it was going a bit far. Then moving on to something a bit more lighthearted, the first collection for Louis Vuitton from Pharrell Williams came out. When I saw that news, I thought, well, oh, that is pretty impressive, rolling out your first collection in two months' time. Turns out that it's actually not a collection designed by him, but it's more of a collection to celebrate that he's joined Louis Vuitton as a creative director. So we will still need to wait and see what he will actually put out there. I'm very curious. Moving on to the topic of low-key luxury, which was a very big topic at least last month. A billion of people did videos about low-key luxury, self-wealth, all of that. So I'm definitely not going to recap what I recapped already last time, but for something that people were considering a pretty major trend last month, it already seems to be sort of simmering down as many trends do. I think some of the things that I still ran into this month as I was going through videos and going through blogs and articles is that low-key luxury seems to have put its stamp a little bit in terms of what people are buying and then more significantly now for spring and summer. So usually we will see particular colors for spring and summer, pastels, bright colors, and with everything being a little bit more low-key right now, we're also just seeing a lot more neutrals. And it's not that brands don't have these summery colors in their collections, but with this low-key luxury trend still going on, people are just a bit more tempted to reach for neutrals. Another video that reminded me of this topic of low-key luxury was one from Jessie Style. I will drop it down below, but she was talking about a number of bags that have lost their popularity. And I think the trend in the video was that people are currently reaching for more casual bags. So before we had some more structured styles, some more dressy styles, styles that could easily go into evening bags as well. Think of the Givenchy Antigona, also the YSL Sunset bag, both very structured bags, especially I think the Sunset bag, a bag that easily converts into an evening bag. And I was thinking in the realms of low-key luxury that we're probably still reaching more for the more casual bags just because we don't want to be too showy. So those might just not be the bags that we are reaching for right now. So all in all, 
the low-key luxury trend is simmering on. We're not having a lot of discussion about it at this point in time. The quiet luxury really does seem to have gone more quiet again. Okay, then on to more interesting things, if you ask me. So let's talk about Chanel, because there was a lot of talk about Chanel in the past month, mostly in the themes of price increases and quality issues. So it started off this month, and I don't recall exactly when this happened, but Tanner Leatherstein, I mean, who doesn't know this guy by now, he got the opportunity to both physically and verbally slay a vintage Chanel toad. So he got the Chanel toad, I think it was sponsored by a consignment store or something like that, and when he tore apart this bag, even though it was a vintage and usually vintage bags from Chanel are considered to be better quality, he was really disappointed by the leather on this bag. He rips apart this Chanel bag only to find out that the lining of the bag is actually made of a PU leather instead of a real leather. Then with this bag being vintage and all and having been donated and not directly bought from a boutique, it brought about some questions about whether this bag was a fake, yes or no. I don't think these issues have eventually been resolved, but honestly I don't really see why he would be donated a fake bag by a company that resells luxury. I would at least hope that they do their best to figure out if a bag is real before they send it on to Tanner Leatherstein, who has, I think, close to 170,000 subscribers. But that was not the only thing. This month, Elfie Lover CC also spoke out about the quality issues of her Chanel 22 bag. This is an issue that has already been discussed a long time ago by a number of YouTubers, most notably by Super Day Cup and Romina Rosemay. But in the case of Elfie Lover CC, she indicated that she had worn her Chanel 22 bag for approximately five or six times, and a very typical wear and tear already started showing up. And not only is that very disappointing for a bag, that cost literally thousands of euros. When she reached out to Chanel to discuss the problem, the sales associate also indicated to her that she was the first person ever in the world to report of this problem. While I think in the luxury community, everybody pretty much knows by now that this bag is very prone to quality issues and that it's commonly not the best bag to invest your money in for the long run. So all of that for Chanel is very disappointing, especially because they have announced a another price increase, I think, for the month of June. In the meanwhile, the Birkin Premium, which is the price difference between a Birkin and sort of the most expensive bag from another brand, has already gone to zero, at least in Europe, because the prices for a Chanel Classic Flap are already exceeding the prices of the cheaper Birkins from the boutique. So I'm very interested to see where all of this is going for Chanel. I think there's been quite a bit of speculation about Chanel trying to imitate Hermes, trying to replicate that status of exclusivity. Let's say that you would have 10 grand to spend on a handbag. Chances are that you will be more likely to try and get a bag from Hermes because as soon as you walk out of the store, that bag has already increased in value. While right now with a number of Chanel bags, that resale premium has completely disappeared. What kind of brand is Chanel actually trying to become? I also can only speculate. I think that a lot of these luxury brands really make most of their money, not from clients who come in once or twice in their life to buy a bag, perhaps not even from clients who come in once or twice a year to buy a bag. I really think they make most of their money of people who will come in, spend 50 grand, and then move on to a boutique a couple of blocks further down the road and spend like another 20 grand to just get all of the items from there that they didn't have in the first boutique. So I don't really think it's a matter of Chanel trying to imitate Hermes in trying to reach that exclusivity. I think it's more perhaps a matter of price elasticity that yes, they will lose quite a number of customers buying Chanel class collapse, for example. But if you look at it as a whole, there will still be plenty of people spending very good money at Chanel. And those are probably the people that they want to focus on a little bit more. Related to that was the news that Louis Vuitton would be canceling their Never Full bag. Well, initially when that news dropped, everybody panicked. And the Dutch we will say that the soup is not being eaten as hot as it's being served. And I think this was really a matter of misunderstanding, miscommunication, speculation, because what it eventually comes down to 
is that Louis Vuitton will just not have their classic Neverfulls available in the boutique anymore. Only a couple of display models. And then if you want to have one, you will need to order it and be on a wait list or perhaps you can still order it online. So there's still some unclarity about what will be happening with the Neverfull. It's just really not such a big deal overall. I think this fits very well in the strategy or the vibe that Louis Vuitton has been trying to exude over the last couple of years. So they've been pushing more towards their leather goods. They've been pushing their capucine back like crazy. They really want to have people move into that higher segment. And I think just like Chanel, they want to focus on the people who are going to spend a lot of money at Louis Vuitton and they don't really care all that much about the people who are going in there to get their first designer bag. I'm making this never fall a little bit Bit more exclusive. LV will have more say in terms of how many they produce. So if they want to focus on producing other bags, at least they can pause the production of the Neverfull. They also don't need to keep stock of all of these Neverfulls in the boutique. So personally, I think this decision will just give them more flexibility in terms of how many Neverfulls they are making available for customers. And that this just very much fits the strategy that they've been trying to follow for a number of years now already. Regardless, however, of what all of these luxury brands are doing, the stocks of these firms have been taking quite a hit in the past month. I think the news was saying that LVMH, or actually more specifically Bernard Arnault, had lost 11 billion euros dollars. I don't know exactly within a day's time. I think for me personally, it has a bit more nuance. That's of course not exactly how stocks work. It's not the case that if stocks increase in value that Arnaud will get a lump sum of money deposited to his account and that if stocks decrease in value, he will have to give that back. I'm sure he will have stock, but at the end of the day, stocks are in the possession of the shareholders. Yes, 11 billion is a lot of money. And I think the total loss in a day or a couple of days for all of the major luxury stocks was 30 billion, but it doesn't really have a lot of direct impact in that sense. I think this is also sort of the season of all of the shareholder meetings. A lot of news and expectations are coming out. I think generally people are just changing their strategies a little bit and the luxury industry just had to suffer a little bit more from that than perhaps some other industries. The purchasing in the United States has slowed down. I don't think that's really such of a surprise given the economic situation. And the other thing was that they had expected a lot more Chinese to go again on foreign holidays and to buy luxury goods abroad. And I think that's also been a little bit lagging due to very practical issues like getting visas. It seems to be really more of a soft decline. Another thing that you need to keep in mind is that these companies are very, very, very big. So LVMH, I think, is 13th on the global ranking in terms of market capital. So you only need to lose a couple of percent or even if you lose 1% of your share value in one day. That is going to be a lot of money. But as far as I can tell, and again, just speculation, and this is by no means financial advice, it doesn't seem that the luxury bubble is bursting anytime soon. And to close off on a positive note, I think we're approaching the mid-season sales. So I've been getting some invites already for early access from Farfetch and from Browns. I think in most cases they have now switched over to having a sale publicly available for everyone on their website. So if you are still buying luxury or contemporary or whatever, then I would say happy shopping. I will talk to you again in the next video. Remember for now, there's a styling, a situation and a taste for everything. So don't judge, wear whatever the bag you like. Until next time, or as we would say in Dutch, doei!